Uh, let's go back to last night's historic address now by Ukrainian President Zelensky, who drew several parallels between his country's fight for independence and America's own struggles for freedom. Standing here today, I recall the words of the President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, which has, I think, so good for this moment. The American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. The American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. Zelensky invoking the words of Franklin Delano Roosevelt during his address to Congress last night. Now let's bring in former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch. She is the author of the memoir, Lessons from the Edge, in which she discusses her 33 years in foreign service. Madam Ambassador, I, I remember you testifying before Congress. And I remember Mika and me looking at each other going, we could have never imagined that we have got, would have gotten here as a country. I must say, now we fast forward how many years? Two years, three years? I could have never imagined what we're seeing now in Ukraine. Extraordinary times. And I'm wondering, what was your great takeaway from an extraordinary speech to a joint session of Congress last night? It was an extraordinary speech, and it was, I believe, an historic speech. Um, Zelensky came with a number of goals. Uh, the first was kind of to give a status report on how are things going in Ukraine. And he said, you know, Ukraine stands. The military stands. The embattled city of Bakhmut stands. We are still here and we are alive and kicking, I think, was, uh, was the quote. Um, and he came here to thank um, the American people, Congress, uh, and, of course, the president uh, for our indispensable support. But he also subtly, perhaps not so subtly, was asking for additional support, that um, this fight is not over. Uh, it is going to be brutal in coming months, um, perhaps even longer. And uh, Ukraine still needs American help. And he memorably said that this is not charity, that this is an investment. It's an investment in American values. And just as important, it's an investment in American security and um, global security. And I think he made a very compelling case for that. I think the last thing that he was trying to accomplish and, and also uh, did, a, did a really good job on was to try to create that personal connection uh, between himself and the president, between himself and members of Congress, um, and also the American people, you know, making the case, um, you know, the political, the strategic case, but also describing what Christmas is going to be like in Kyiv and in other places um, in, in Ukraine. It's going to be cold. It's going to be dark. It's, um, there's not going to be any water. Uh, temperatures are going to be freezing or below, um, but Ukraine still stands. Madam Ambassador, uh, you heard, uh, like I did and so many others, heard the best and the brightest when Putin began his invasion, talking about a three-day war, a four-day war. Um, the pessimism uh, not only across Europe, but also in Washington, D.C., even from, from hawks, uh, was that Ukraine would quickly fold. Uh, and now, as you said, how dramatically the president of Ukraine comes here all the, this time later where they, they have the strategic advantage in many ways, talking about still standing and the words he said last night that gave me chills, only victory. It was sort mm -hmm. of like MacArthur. There is no substitute for victory. I have to ask you, because you have such insight into Ukraine, so many people didn't see this coming. Tell me about the character of the Ukrainian people, uh, which has made this historic fight uh, continue for as long as it, as, as it has. America, uh, I think Ukrainians are like Americans. They are strong, they are resilient, and they are not going to allow a bully like Putin, a country like Russia, come in and dictate to Ukrainians. And it's really more than dictatorship, because, uh, because Putin has made clear that he is going to destroy Ukraine as a country. He is going to exterminate the Ukrainian people. So this is an existential fight, and the Ukrainians are 
you know, they are courageous, they are uh, committed, and they are very confident, um, as you heard last night from President Zelensky himself, uh, that they are going to win. Uh, and with our help, uh, if we provide enough assistance quickly enough, they will win. Madam Ambassador, we heard President Zelensky lay out some of the terms that he saw as necessary to come to any kind of agreement. What would be palatable, realistically, for both sides to even come to the table for peace talks? Well, I think right now, you know, I mean, uh, to everything there is a season. And I think right now, neither side is ready to sit down at the table. I mean, they, they could sit down at the table today if Russia would stop um, its attacks on Ukraine, right? Um, but Russia, even as it says it wants peace, is in fact doing the exact opposite. And the Ukrainians understand that if they stop fighting, if they go to uh, a peace table right now, um, there are going to be compromises that uh, they will not be able to live with long term and that Russia will just regroup and rearm and come back later for more. That's what happened in 2014, 2015 with the Minsk, um, with the Minsk agreements where there was a ceasefire and uh, we got to what are, what are now being called the February 23rd um, uh, lines. Uh, and so I think the Ukrainians don't want to make that mistake again. This is about their existential, um, their, ex their very existence. Ambassador Yovanovitch, it's great to see you. It's Jen Psaki. I wanted to ask you, as you said, the, uh, President Zelensky came with asks as well. More artillery. Mm -hmm. He made a great little light joke about uh, wanting uh, more defensive weapons. But one of his asks that he's been asking for privately is for more offensive, offensive weapons and long range missiles. What is, where do you come down on that? Um, and why, um, why do you think uh, that's something that uh, they're, they're demanding or asking for at this point in time? Well, I, um, I would be in favor uh, of, uh, of this. I think that we should be providing uh, Ukraine with as much and the kinds of equipment that both sides agree are, are the necessary thing. And I'm not a military expert, so I don't want to get into the specifics. Um, but I do believe uh, that Ukraine um, uh, deserves our help. And I think that um, if we hold back on some of our assistance, and I, I realize there's always politics involved and management of uh, the alliance and other partners, but if we hold back, then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy um, that if the Ukrainians don't have the equipment they need, they cannot prevail. And we need Ukraine to prevail in, uh, in Ukraine. Um, that is in our national security interests um, to stop Russia in Ukraine. All right, Marie Ivanovich, thank you as always. We're Thanks. eternally grateful for your service to our country, and thank you so much for being with us today.